Hello, welcome back to Access E3. Holly and I are quite tired, <laughs> but still buzzing from the PlayStation conference. We've just come back. Um, we want to talk about five games that prove PlayStation owned E3. Because it was amazing. That conference it really was, was. It was just all the games. <laughs> Have another amazing game. <laughs> it's just constant. Games, games, games. Um, five for spe specifically that five. were incredible. Should and we we'll, go in order? We'll go in order as to how they appeared in the conference. First of all, we've got to start with The Last Guardian. Uh, because every E3 for the past... It's been a bit of a like... Three or four E3, is it going to be there? It's going to be there. My friend said... My friend's dad works at PlayStation <laughs> and he said Last Guardian was going to be at E3. Well, you, yeah, well, and he was right this year. Finally, it was here. And I don't think it disappointed. That Beautiful. gameplay looked... There was an amazing haunting beauty to the world that was just like Ico, Shadow of the Colossus. But that's what it's really reminiscent of, isn't it? It's just yeah. this beautiful world that just has that kind of... The, the child is clearly really insignificant to the, what is a massive, beautiful world. And it just kind of... I love the way it took elements from both Eco, Ico... Like, there's always arguments over the oh, correct, not, not the correct the pronunciation. Tonight. Eco is probably the cor correct pronunciation. I've always said Ico, but then I'm always saying things wrong. But anyway, the, the evolution of the mechanics there. Eco, you've got the... You know, Yorda jumps, you catch her, pull her up. Exactly. Uh, in Shadow of the Colossus, scrambling up the backs of these colossi. And both of those things happen lots in uh, The Last Guardian. When he was scrambling up the back. Yeah. And that especially Just the really way it all flowed into each other. You would leap and the cat-dog-bird thing would catch you. Cat-dog-bird thing? pull you up. Ah. And then you would, you know, move a log so he could climb up a bit further. And then he'd catch you with his tail and the way his feathers, feathers rippled feather in the tech. wind. Every individual feather was rippling as the wind blew into his coat. It looked majestic and wonderful. It's a great way to kick off the, the show yeah. as well, because if you're going to kick off with anything, it's like, look, let's just set the tone. Here it is. And here's the last guardian. It's here. And just sort of walk off stage. What's our next game? The next one's going to be Horizon, oh, yes. which was stunning. So um, Horizon is from Gorilla, the, the guys who normally make kill zones. So... It's a beautiful it was an amazing, departure from yeah, Killzone. An amazing kind of contrast to Killzone. Exactly. Killzone is a very pretty game, but the colour palette is it's very different. industrial, very exactly. sharp and grey and dark. blue and futuristic. It's, and, a, it's meant yeah. to be a dark game. Horizon, and this is just, oh. an amazingly vivid post-apocalypse. Beautiful. Beautiful, green, lush, open world with robot dinosaurs. Now, I'm... I have three things I'm terrified of, right? Dr. <laughs> Seuss, ghosts, and I really dinosaurs. hate dinosaurs. I, they, they always laugh. I really am terrified even, of dinosaurs. Even the nice vegetarian ones. Even the vegetarian, ones. <laughs> vegetarian ones I don't like. But what the about robot ones, robot ones? They looked cool. I didn't mind the robot ones. I, I will lie. I, they were a bit creepy. They were great, though. I mean, that... They were great. The that boss battle. Boss battle. Yes. Assuming it's even a boss, and that's yeah. not just expected of you. There was kind of the, the harpoon thing with the ropes attached oh, where she anchored it into the ground and beautiful. toppled it down and it was, you know, paralysed there and she hit its weak spot with a bow and just arrow. Even before she got to that, like just creeping through the, the, the ferns yeah. and then the way she sort of spoke to it uh, when she killed it, it's, it's that kind of reminiscent of someone who's in touch with nature and knows they have to kill to survive, yeah. but that like, I don't want to do this, but I have to. It just set that beautiful tone. It's clearly a post-apocalyptic yeah, world, I, I but love not the, in a depressing manner. I love the mystery of it as well, because obviously our civilization today has ended in the yeah. world of Horizon. It's been overgrown and reclaimed, and it looks like it's whatever happened happened centuries ago. And civilization has kind of gone back to basics really yeah, hunter but, gatherer but kind of thing but these weird futuristic robot <laughs> dinosaurs are still around so Doing where did thing. they come from what what part do they play in the story I just think it's really interesting I just it's really the, cool to I find mean, out the, the main character she looked incredible yeah uh, really would love to get to know her story but like the weapon the bow and arrow and just the way they were flicking between the different kind of arrowheads and just ah oh, the way you could move underneath the dinosaur and had to pick out mm. those weak spots ripping parts off it it was Let's move on. Okay. Let's move on to dreams. Because... I'm a big Media Molecule fan. They brought it up and everyone was like, what's this? It's a new game. And then uh, Alex Evans, I believe, was it, who was on stage. And, oh, it's, the, it's Media Molecule. They're finally here to announce what they're doing on PS4. And even though they revealed it, I still don't quite know what it is. And they kind of warned us about that. <laughs> the whole is. point of dreams 
is that, you know, you're never going to really get it at first because we've always been told, oh, in this game you can build and you can create. But there are still limitations, right? There's only a certain number of things you can yeah. put on the field or you have to have the the items they provide. But Dreams is saying, go, do Just what you want. make anything. I mean, that's always what they tried to do with Little Big Planet was yeah. give you the tool set to literally make whatever game you want. Here you can just make stuff. And they Anything. had the DualShock 4 on and he drew a man playing a piano. And I loved the, the look of it. It had that look oh, of... Oh, the way the, the grass was moving. Just the guy's face as well. The kind of His facial features were kind of fuzzy and indistinct. It's like when you're dreaming and you try and remember what your dream was about. You can't remember it that well and the details are kind of... But you've got the feeling. You remember the, you remember the mood and the feeling. Yeah. They've somehow managed to capture visually what dreams look like. Exactly. And it's it's unbelievable. And you the fact that it had a man playing a piano in a beautiful forest. And then it had a polar so bears polar bears, which and looked, a little one. You know, really cute. And then it cut to a sci-fi chase on a hoverboard which for a futuristic so city cool. with lasers firing all over the place. And then there was a teddy fighting some things. Yeah, it looked like a little zombie. Ah, <laughs> oh, it was just amazing. I think I use this uh, analogy sort of in a different video. But Hohokam was really similar in the sense that it dropped all that kind of, these are the goals, these are the yeah. enemies, boss fights, way markers, objectives that are on the mini map and you follow your objectives and it's just, just look, here's the game, just do what you want. Um, don't worry about finishing it. There's still lots to learn about dreams. There and I is. don't think we're really gonna grasp what it is and what we can do. It's a detox. Until we actually it, It's a gaming play detox. The thing. It yeah. allows you to remove all of these pre-assumptions that you have, you know, how your health regenerates and where the next objective is and actually just break all that down and enjoy something for the pure creativity that it delivers you. I think it's going to be tough for people to do that at first. But interesting. I can't Very wait. interesting. Another thing I can't wait for, <laughs> <laughs> the Final Fantasy VII remake. Now we mentioned that in our <sighs> conference roundup video and I was still at that point couldn't really talk about it it's... because of just the, the excitement of it. Now Final Fantasy VII is my number one favourite game of all time in the history of the world ever. I know you're a Final Fantasy VIII fan, I'm eight, Holly, but, but I'm still a Final Fantasy me, fan, so... Seven is the ultimate one, and everyone's always gone on about how they wanted a, a Final Fantasy VII PS4 remake, and I always felt maybe they should just leave it alone. I call it retro-tinted spectacles, just, yeah, where just, you sometimes a game is better off being remembered just fondly. Just leave it alone, because it's brilliant. But then as soon as that trailer came on, <laughs> and like, the musical <laughs> cue started, and... Midgar appeared in all its next generation Even glory. Even just spotting Barrett like getting and then, on the train. Yeah, and, and then the trains like, come it? off and wow, that's amazing. And then the gun arm comes on, you're like, oh, that's Barrett. And then it pulls back and it's, just and that it's the, the Buster, Buster sword. sword and it moves up and you see his hair. Oh, It was just... Wow. It's one of those goosebump moments. Yeah. I was saying this to Rob, I still get the goosebumps every time I hear the Last of Us theme. Yeah. And that Final Fantasy video did the same thing. Oh, the music on it, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, people of YouTube. They will. But it, <laughs> they <laughs> I'm will. sure they will. Mm. It was, I believe, uh, a bit of music from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children that was playing, actually. And... Oh, it's just beautiful. Just, oh, Being back in that world again. It's I mean, it's great. been nearly 20 years since Final Fantasy yeah. VII came out. And it instantly, as soon as I was seeing everything there, even though it looks new and shiny, just transported me back to when I was 10 years old. And just there's this idea that there's going to be a whole bunch of people out there <clears> that... <throat> They will never have played Final Fantasy VII for whatever reason. Yeah. And this will be their first time. And if it is, don't bother levelling Ares. Let's not, let's not talk about <laughs> Just don't do it, trust me. Let's not talk about Let's talk about our last game then on our list of five Go games. Go on then. And it was the game that closed the show. Uncharted 4. That, when they pushed that door open, yeah. I was like, here we go, here we go. Temple, temple, temple. They pushed it open and then it was just beautiful white light exploding into colour and it was Yes, incredible. It looked ridiculous. It was clearly a live demo, which is also great. Yes, we know things don't always go to plan, but it's <laughs> so great to know that they what we were seeing on was... on stage. Yeah, that, that was gameplay. And the crowds looked amazing. Nathan and Sully weaving their way through the, through the crowd. Nolan North and is then, a genius yeah. when it comes to bringing Nathan Drake to life. That's simply, there's one bit, they about to go down the steps and they bumped into money. He's like, oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. And just... Oh, the, well, he the told us in, in that, that in the interview we did with him that's on the channel now. You can yes. see it. Um, he says how they do it. They kind of he watches the gameplay and he'll record. Yeah. He'll improvise over the gameplay. So I imagine he saw that. I was like, oh, sorry, guy. Sorry, mate. It's just mate, amazing, buddy. Um, but then the gun, the gun battle started happening. Oh my god, flying punch! 
flying punch. We just great. What, what impressed me most was the destructible cover. I know we've had destructible cover before, but it looked like the best destructible cover I've ever seen. It's one of those things where you can do a destructible cover, but what happens is things just fall off in massive chunks and it, it's yeah. sort of very repeated. But even way the sandbags were yeah. losing sand and were becoming thinner the longer he was staying behind the sandbags. It was great. And then in the Jeep for an amazing, oh ridiculous God. chase through the city. Set pieces, right? No one does set pieces like Naughty Dog. No. Where they have these beautiful things set up and you mix that with Nolan North bringing Nathan Drake to life and you just have like that ending. We just swing towards that and you're just like, no. <laughs> it's not gonna go well. Nothing ever goes smoothly. I love the bit where he said, well, that Jeep's, that truck isn't gonna get through that and then boom, there it is. <gasps> what a surprise. I love it. But yeah, it's going to be awesome. So there we go. There are five games. That <laughs> That's us basically just gush, like gush fanning it. out. Yeah. <laughs> Still calming down from it. Five games that we think prove PlayStation owned E3. Oh. An amazing conference. Um, let us know what your favourite bits of the conference were in the comments. Uh, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Please subscribe because it's E3 week and we're going to have absolutely loads of videos coming up. So stay tuned.